Intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. This lecture will include an introduction, classification, etiology, clinical picture, investigation, diagnosis, differential diagnosis, complications, and management maternal and pregnancy, and the management of subsequent pregnancy. Intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy is characterized by pruritus without rash and elevation in serum bile acid concentration. Typically, this develops in the late second and or the third trimester, rapidly resolve after delivery. However, alternative diagnosis such as preeclampsia should always be considered before a diagnosis of ICP is made. We used to consider the diagnosis of ICP based on pruritus and elevated serum bile acids, elevated aminotransferases, or both. In the most recent Green Top Guideline 2022, blood tests such as alanine transaminase or aspartate transaminase are not associated with pregnancy outcome. For this reason, the consensus is now that the diagnosis of ICP requires elevated maternal bile acid concentration and that women and pregnant people with itching and isolated increased liver enzymes should not be given a diagnosis of ICB. This means the diagnosis requires pruritus without rash and elevated bile acids. Liver aminotransferases are not required for the diagnosis of intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. The incidence of ICB varies widely worldwide. In the UK, for example, the incidence is 0.7%, up to 1.5% of women of Indian or Pakistani origin, approximately 1% in the USA, and the highest in Chile, 27.6%. Risk factors include seasonal variation, because it occurs more frequently in winter, advanced maternal age, personal or family history of cholestasis with oral contraceptive use, multiparity, and the twin pregnancies are five times more likely to develop ICP. Regarding the terminology used for women with itching of normal skin, gestational pruritus if bile acid concentration less than 19 micromole per liter. Mild ICP if bile acid concentration between 19 and 39. Moderate ICB if bile acid concentration between 40 and 99. Severe ICP if bile acid concentration 100 micromole per liter or more. Regarding the etiology, there is a genetic susceptibility, and up to 15% of ICB cases are associated with a mutation in a gene called ABC4B. This gene encodes the multidrug resistance 3 protein which is a canalicular phospholipid translocator. Estrogen also has a known role in causing cholestasis. Environmental factor. The seasonal and geographic variability in ICB suggests the environmental factor could modulate the expression of the disease. And finally, although uncommon, some women who develop ICB have underlying liver disease revealed by pregnancy or contributing to the development of ICB. Clinically, ICB is characterized by pruritus without rash. This symptom usually occurs in the late second or third trimester, although it may occur in the first trimester. It may affect all areas of the body, but characteristically it starts in the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. It's often worse at night. Other symptoms like right upper quadrant pain, nausea, poor appetite, sleep deprivation, or steatorrhea may occur. During examination, no primary skin lesions. However, scratch mark, excoriation, and nodules, secondary to scratching, may be seen. Jaundice occurs in 14 to 25 percent of patients, typically developing one to four weeks after the onset of itching. In the recent Green Top guideline, it's mentioned that. Women who develop pruritus and abnormalities in liver function and bile acids in the first or second trimester, and especially in the first trimester, are more likely to have an underlying genetic predisposition. Input from a hepatologist 
should be considered. In addition, a postnatal referral should be considered if itching and biochemical abnormalities didn't resolve after birth. Regarding investigation, bile acids may be the first and only laboratory abnormality. Other possible abnormalities include serum aminotransferases, it is elevated in 60% of cases. Alkaline phosphatase is elevated in ICP up to four folds. However, this is not helpful as alkaline phosphatase is normally elevated in pregnancy. Bilirubin concentration elevated in 25% of cases. Gamma glutamyl transpeptidase is normal or slightly elevated in 30% of cases. Prothrombin time usually normal. When prolonged, it typically secondary to vitamin K deficiency. Regarding exclusion of other causes of itching or abnormal liver function, including viral and autoimmune tests and the liver ultrasound, a recent advice from the Green Top Guideline states that previous RCOG guidelines have recommended routine laboratory and imaging investigations to exclude other causes for the clinical picture of ICP. However, routine use of other investigation is no longer recommended. And the UK National Screening Committee does not recommend routine screening for hepatitis C in pregnancy due to lack of evidence of benefits. And finally, regarding the diagnosis, the diagnosis of ICB should be considered in pregnant women who have itching in skin of normal appearance and an elevated random total bile acid concentration of 19 micromole per liter or more. And the diagnosis is more likely if these findings resolve after birth. For women with severe, very early or atypical presentation, consider discussion with a hepatologist. Sometimes pruritis with normal skin precede elevated bile acids. This woman should be given a diagnosis of gestational pruritus. If itching continues for this woman, they should be offered the review with repeated liver function tests and bile acid measurements. Uh, previously, we used to say repeat every one week, but recent guidelines said as clinically indicated and they didn't give a specific timing. Regarding differential diagnosis, ICB should be differentiated from other causes of pruritus and other causes of abnormal liver function. Regarding pruritus, the lack of primary skin lesion in ICP helped to differentiate it from most pregnancy-specific pruritic dermatosis and skin conditions unrelated to pregnancy. Uh, this include pregnancy-specific causes such as pruritus gravidarum, atopic eruption of pregnancy, polymorphic eruption of pregnancy, bimphigoid gestationis, and prurigo of pregnancy, and also pruritic folliculitis of pregnancy. And pre-existing causes of pruritus like atopic dermatitis, allergic or drug reaction, and systemic disease. Regarding causes of abnormal liver function, they are either pregnancy-specific or pre-existing, pregnancy-specific like acute fatty liver of pregnancy, HELP syndrome, hyperemesis gravidarum, and pre-existing causes like viral hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, autoimmune hepatitis, drug-induced liver injury, biliary obstruction, and veno-occlusive disease. Regarding maternal complications of ICB, this includes a higher chance of developing preeclampsia and gestational diabetes. Regarding fetal effects, there is increased risk of intrauterine demise, meconium stained amniotic fluid, preterm delivery, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Regarding fetal death, which is the most serious fetal complication, it may be related to the sudden development of fetal arrhythmia or vasospasm of the placental chorionic surface vessels induced by the high level of bile acids. The risk of fetal death depends on the bile acid level, comorbidities, and also increased in twin pregnancy. Regarding bile acid levels, 
in women with bile acid level peak between 19 and 39. The risk of stillbirth is similar to the background risk. If bile acid between 40 and 99, the risk of stillbirth is similar to the background risk until 38 to 39 weeks. However, in women with peak bile acid 100 microgram per liter or more, the risk of stillbirth is higher than the background risk. Regarding comorbidities, such as gestational diabetes or preeclampsia or multiple pregnancy, this appears to increase the risk of stillbirth. In twins, the risk of stillbirth is higher in ICP and twin compared to twin pregnancy without ICP. Treatment of ICP includes maternal treatment and pregnancy treatment. Regarding maternal treatment, we used to say that orthodeoxycholic acid is the preferred treatment. In refractory cases unresponsive to this medication, an alternative medication can be used such as S-adenosylmethionine, cholestyramine or rifampicine. Other drugs for symptomatic treatments include chlorpheniramine, calamine lotion, and some studies tried dexamethasone, but it didn't improve pruritus or decrease serum aminotransferase level. However, the recent Green Top Guideline mentioned that the role of drug treatment in ICB is to try to reduce maternal itching. I mean, it's a symptomatic treatment only. There is no evidence that routine medical treatment improves maternal increased bile acids concentration or perinatal outcome. For this reason, it advises topical emollients. Yes, consider topical emollients such as aqueous cream with or without menthol added to decrease skin symptoms. Also, it advises antihistamines. Consider antihistaminic agents such as chlorpheniramine. Regarding also the oxycholic acid, don't routinely offer this medication for the purpose of reducing adverse perinatal outcome in women with ICP. Regarding other medication like rifampicin, don't offer other medication for treatment of ICP outside research study. Regarding vitamin K, if a woman has symptoms such as steatorrhea, coagulation assessment should be performed and the use of vitamin K treatment considered. Regarding monitoring of maternal condition, for women with ICB, consider repeating liver function test and bile acid after one week, and then determine frequency on an individual basis. The frequency depends on bile acid level. If the bile acid level 19 to 39, they could have weekly testing as they approach 38 weeks. If the woman has a moderate ICB, I mean the level between 40 and 99, they can have weekly testing if they are approaching 35 weeks. However, if the level is 100 micromole or liter, further routine testing of bile acid might not impact on the decision making, I mean the decision is made before repeating the test. Regarding monitoring of the fetus to assess fetal well-being, ultrasound for biophysical profile or CTG don't predict or prevent stillbirth in ICB. Advise the woman with ICB to monitor fetal movement and present for immediate assessment at their local maternity unit if they have any concern about the fetal movement. And now regarding the time of birth. This depends mainly on the bile acid concentration. If bile acid concentration less than 19, the diagnosis is gestational pruritus. It has no effect on stillbirth and no impact on birth timing. Mild ICB, I mean bile acids 19 to 39 micromole per liter. It has no effect on stillbirth and consider birth by 40 weeks. In moderate ICB, when bile acid between 40 and 99, the stillbirth rate is similar to general population until 38 to 39 weeks. Therefore, consider birth by 38 to 39 weeks. In severe ICB, if bile acid more than 100 micromole per liter, 
the stillbirth rate is higher than general population at 35 to 36 weeks. Therefore, consider birth by 35 to 36 weeks. Regarding mode of birth, ICB itself does not impact the choice of the mode of birth. Regarding monitoring of labor, if the bile acid is 100 or more, continuous electronic fetal monitoring is offered. If bile acid less than 100, there is insufficient evidence for or against continuous electronic fetal monitoring. However, in the presence of other comorbidities such as gestational diabetes or preeclampsia, this may necessitate monitoring during birth. Offer standard analgesia and anesthesia in case of uncomplicated ICP. In the third stage of labor, there is no evidence of increased risk of postpartum hemorrhage with uncomplicated ICP. In the postpartum period, ICB is not a contraindication for breastfeeding. Arrange a follow-up at least four weeks after birth to confirm resolution of ICP. If laboratory abnormality don't return to normal, refer the patient to a hepatologist. Regarding contraception, cover bearing IUCD, levonorgestrel IUS, progestogen only implant, progestogen only injectable, and progestogen only pills can be used without restriction. I mean, category one. Regarding a combined hormonal contraceptive, they can be initiated after normalization of liver function test. They are considered the category two, provided they don't have a history of contraception related cholestasis. Advise women to attend for review if recurrence of itching or abnormal liver function occur while using the combined hormonal contraception. At that time, it is considered the category three. Regarding HRT, Consider offering it if there are no other contraindications to its use. In subsequent pregnancy, cholestasis recurs during subsequent pregnancies. However, the precise magnitude of the problem is unclear. Perform a baseline liver function test and bile acid concentration during the booking blood investigations.